Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're talking about arguments for the existence of God, and this time we'll discuss the teleological argument, or the argument from fine-tuning. Premise 1. The fine-tuning of the universe is either because of physical necessity, chance, or design. Premise 2. The fine-tuning of the universe isn't because of physical necessity or chance. Conclusion. Therefore, the fine-tuning of the universe is because of design. Now, let's look at the evidence for the premises. Premise 1. When we speak of the fine-tuning of the universe, this refers to a number of different universal constants and specific quantities, which make it possible for intelligent life to exist in the universe. The reason we call it fine-tuned is that in order for intelligent life to exist in the universe, those values all need to fall into an incredibly narrow range by comparison to the huge range of numbers that they could fall into. The laws of the universe could accommodate an enormous number of different values, only a microscopic fraction of which are life-permitting. In fact, the full possible range of those values has already been calculated, and for even one of them to fall into the life-permitting range is staggeringly improbable. When you take into account the fact that all of them have fallen into the life-permitting range, you've got to multiply one improbability by another, and another, and another. Clearly, the incredible improbability of this needs to be explained. Why are the chances so incredibly small? There are only three possible explanations. Either it's because it's physically necessary for these values to fall into these tiny ranges, or else it just happened that way by chance, or else it was designed that way. Someone set up the universe to support intelligent life. Premise 2. In order to prove premise 2, all we really have to do is rule out physical necessity and chance as sufficient explanations of the fine-tuning. 1. To start with, it's impossible for these various constants to be physically necessary, since that implies that some physical law makes it necessary for them to be the way they are. However, the enormously improbable constants aren't dependent on the physical laws of nature. They're initial conditions of the universe, so they can't be physically necessary. 2. On the topic of chance, the problem with suggesting that these life-permitting values arose by chance alone is just the sheer improbability of such a thing actually happening. To understand just how improbable, it helps to know what kinds of odds we're dealing with here. The odds of this happening by chance alone have been calculated to be approximately 1 in 10 to the power of 10 quad quadra quadra this many. So yes, we're talking about numbers so immense that no computer on Earth can process them as whole numbers. What makes this especially devastating, however, is that this number is actually far greater than the usual standard for something being mathematically impossible, 1 in 10 to the power of 80. Therefore, there's no good reason to think that chance is a good explanation of the fine-tuning. Conclusion Premise 1 implies the fine-tuning, and explains what options we have for explaining it. Premise 2 explains why chance and physical necessity don't work as explanations of the fine-tuning. From these, it follows that the remaining option, design, is correct. This seems like a good argument. What kinds of objections could be brought against it? Objection 1. Just because a random event may seem unlikely to us doesn't mean it can't happen. I can punch up a random series of numbers on my computer easily, and that's not impossible just because the set I end up with is unlikely. Reply. It's not merely the improbability of the values that makes chance an unrealistic explanation. There's also the fact that these values follow a specific pattern, namely, the pattern of being life-permitting, and life-permitting in a very specific way, so that things like stars, planets, flora, bacteria, and even something as basic as the variety of different chemicals were able to come into existence. When you're walking on a beach, and you find the phrase, Norman was here, drawn in the sand, you don't assume it was formed by a large number of seashells being randomly tossed onto the beach by the waves. To resort to chance as an explanation of the universe would be the same kind of reasoning in this case. Objection 2. If the universe didn't end up this way, we wouldn't be here to observe it, so we shouldn't be surprised that the universe is life-permitting. If it weren't, we wouldn't be alive. Reply. This is a misunderstanding. We're not surprised that we don't observe a life-prohibiting universe. Of course we don't, and this is the reason why. 
What needs an explanation is the fact that we do observe such an incredibly improbable thing as a life-permitting universe. Besides, a universe could be life-permitting and still not be fine-tuned in the way ours is. In fact, it's been discovered that it would actually be far more likely for a single intelligent brain to pop into existence from random particles, a scenario that's been called a Boltzmann brain, than for an orderly universe like ours to arise by chance. So, chance is still a far inferior explanation. Objection 3. There's nothing unlikely about the universe being well-ordered because there are an infinite number of worlds out there, all randomly ordered, so that eventually a world like ours was bound to pop up. Reply. Not only would it pop up in this scenario, but it would pop up an infinite number of times. However, there are big problems with citing the multiverse as an objection to this sort of argument. First, we have no good evidence that these infinite worlds even exist, and we never will. That's part of the premise of the multiverse theory, that the worlds are completely unable to interact in any meaningful way. Secondly, the very idea of an actually infinite number of finite things is very problematic, and, I think, impossible, because no matter how many of a certain thing you have, you can always add more. Third, why assume that these worlds, about which we know nothing, remember, are randomly ordered? There's no evidence for this, either. Fourth, the multiverse cites an infinite number of things as an explanation of the way things are in our own world, and this is clearly in violation of Occam's razor, which states that you should never multiply causes beyond what's necessary. Not only does the multiverse explanation do this, but it does it infinitely, which means that there might not be a worse alternative explanation than this one. Objection 4. We don't need God to explain the fine-tuning. We have evolution for that. Reply. This is just a misunderstanding. The fine-tuning that we're talking about has nothing to do with how animal life developed. It's about universal values and the fact that the universe is life-permitting. So it follows that the best explanation for the fine-tuning of the universe for intelligent life is God, which is a good reason to believe that God exists. Next time, can we learn anything about God from the definition of God? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.